The purpose of this amazingly awesome video is to introduce Incline Planes for, to you. It's our, our next topic, and the good thing about it is that you don't have to learn any new math. There's just a few new concepts, and we'll be building on our understanding of Newton's laws that you've already tested on. So to start, we'll start with our most basic of examples, which is a block sitting on an incline. And for now, we'll assume that the incline and the block are frictionless. We'll get to friction in your next video. As always, you start with a free body diagram. And in this case, there is obviously the normal force, which acts perpendicular to the surface, and gravity, which always acts straight down. Now in the past, we've always said the X is horizontal because it's been parallel to the surface, and the surface has been horizontal. However, now the surface is at an incline, therefore the x-axis is also at the same angle as the incline. As always, our y-axis is perpendicular to the incline. Another important thing is that you remember to define which way is positive. Personally, I will always call right along the x-axis as positive, and y I will use you know, the up direction as the positive direction. Now, if you were to extend this force of gravity down, you would actually see that it makes a triangle with the base of the incline and the slope of the incline. Now, this right triangle has an angle of theta in the bottom right. That is the angle of the incline. Being that it's a right triangle, we then can figure out that the angle at the top of the triangle will be 90 minus theta. Also, the x and y are perpendicular to each other, as you can see here. Therefore, if the angle on the right is 90 minus theta, the angle on the left is just theta. This means that the angle on the left is the same as the incline. Now, gravity acts straight down. However, this is where it becomes slightly different than what you've done in the past. Gravity has always acted in the y-axis. We wouldn't have to deal with it, but now it is at an angle with respect to the x and y-axis. As always, when we have forces at angles, we have to break them into x and y components. The y always acts along the y-axis, the x along the x-axis. And you can see these are labeled FGY for force of gravity in the y-axis, and FGX as the force of gravity in the x-axis. Now these are just arrows and vectors. You can pick these up and move them around. So I'm gonna move the x so you so it creates a triangle like you've seen before, all right? It's a right triangle, but let's just focus on that for now. For now, the ng, the force of gravity, is actually the hypotenuse, and we have an angle. And as we've done in the past, we always use sine and cosine to split it up. Let's focus on the fgy. If you look at it, it is adjacent to the angle, and fg, uh, excuse me, mg is the hypotenuse. Adjacent over hypotenuse is actually cosine. And in this case, as you see across the top here, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is FGY over MG. If I multiply both sides by MG, I get that the force of gravity in the Y axis is MG cosine theta. Now, I realize that in the past, Y has been sine. However, for inclined planes, you will switch this. That's the only trick you have to remember. Now, similar, we have to talk about FGX. FGX is opposite the angle, and the hypotenuse is still MG. Opposite over hypotenuse is the sine of the angle. Multiplying both sides by MG, we get that FGX is MG sine theta. Now, I have a feeling that talking this through, some of you are like, what is he talking about? I'm completely lost. If that's the case, it's okay. I hate to admit it, but you can actually memorize that the force of gravity in the Y is mg cosine theta, and the force of gravity in the X is mg sine theta. So basically what we have here is your free body diagram. Notice it does not include the force of gravity straight down. Instead, there's a force of gravity in the X and the force of gravity in the Y. So if you start with just this FBD, that's totally cool. And at the bottom, you can see that FGY is MG cosine theta, FGX is MG sine theta. 
These are not things that go on your card, however. You will just memorize them after doing enough problems. It's okay. So, as always, when we're doing a problem, we have an FBD, we do our sum of the forces in the X equals MAX. The only force you have is FGX. So that's going to be the one that equals MAX. We said in the previous slide that FGX is MG sine theta, so we're replacing that there. That's it. Nothing else to do in the x-axis. We have to talk about the y. Now, the sum of the forces in the y actually equals zero. And for some people, this is difficult because it's sliding down the incline. And what you have to realize is that, yeah, down the incline, it goes, but down is a bad word because it technically never leaves the x-axis. Therefore, it doesn't accelerate in the y-axis. I promise you that for every incline problem that you do, there will be no acceleration in the y-axis. So back to this, the forces in the y are the normal force and FGY. FGY from the previous slide we said was mg cosine theta. So you're left with Fn equals mg cosine theta. That's it. There's nothing else to solve for at the moment. So here's a sample problem. 10 kilogram box is released five meters from the base of a 15 degree incline. Assuming there is no friction, how long will it take to reach the bottom of the incline? Using your notes that you just took about the previous slides, please draw a free body diagram of this, do your sum of the forces in the X, sum of the forces in the Y, and see how you do. Right now would probably be a good time to pause this video and give this sample problem a shot. Now, I don't know if you really paused it or you're just continuing to listen to me, but hopefully you gave it a shot and you got some answers. So as we did before, we did some of the forces in the X equals MAX. All we had was FGX, which we replaced with MG sine theta. Okay, plugging in our numbers, we get that the acceleration is 2.55 meters per second squared. It says that the box is released, therefore we can assume that its initial velocity is zero. We know its acceleration now, we know a distance. This to me sounds like, ooh, math rep three. I forgot what we were doing, to be honest. Um, to see how long it takes to get down the incline, solving for time, you get 1.98 seconds. Now you may not need to do some of the forces in the Y because it's not necessary here. However, I'm gonna do it because it's a good habit to get into. As you know, the normal force is related to friction, so we'll probably be getting into this soon enough. As it said on the other slide, we're left with Fn equals mg cosine theta. Plugging in numbers, you get that Fn is 94.66 newtons. Okay. Now, some of you may have been a little sneaky and may have noticed that the mass divides out. Please be careful with this, as we've seen in our previous topic. Using what we have already, that mg sine theta equals max, you can see that there is a mass in every turn. If there's a mass in every turn, the mass does divide out. As you can see here, dividing both sides by mass, or really every turn by mass, the mass will divide out, and you're left with g sine theta equals ax. Please don't memorize this. It's only a special case. However, if there's not a mass in every term, the mass does not divide out. Maybe there's a 50 newton force pushing it down an incline. If you divide all these things by mass, you're left with g sine theta plus 50 over m equals ax, which is sort of pointless. So please be careful with that. Don't just slash and burn the mass. Everybody seems to do it in the years past. They just start crossing out mass. Please be careful. Divide every term by mass. So what we're going to do now is summarize some of the important points of inclined planes. The first and most important is that the force of gravity is no longer just in the y-axis. We remedy this by breaking x, uh, gravity excuse me, up into its x and y components. As I said before, you can memorize this if you had trouble following the trig, but please do not put it in your, on your card. FGY is mg cosine theta, FGX is mg sine theta. To solve each problem, nothing has changed. You draw an FBD, and you can opt to use FGY and FGX instead of just FG. Personally, that's what I'll be doing. 
Use some of the forces in the x equals mAx. Some of the forces in the y equals mAy. And remember to question, is it accelerating in the y? I promise you, it is not on an incline. It never leaves the y-axis. Set up your equations using your FBD, as you've done in the past with the previous topic. See if the mass divides out. You know, if you're not given mass, odds are it does, but just be careful. Don't just start crossing out mass. It's a bad move. And finally, substitute in your numbers and solve. Now, the problem that we did as an example is very similar to the ones that are assigned for homework. They are basic problems. They will get a little bit more challenging, but for now, this video should help get you on your way. If you feel like starting the homework early, give it a shot, but either way, we'll be working on this in class Please come prepared with really good notes so that you can just work on problems in class.